Welcome to Chain Rule Continued. All right, so the functions we have on this particular page um, are a little unique because they actually consist of three functions. Whoops, let me write that a little clearer. All right, so this, these are going to be a three functions chain rule. Okay? When you have more than one, uh, more than two functions, you're going to work inside out. And actually, I'm going to move my problems down just so that I can write that in. You should write this in as well. Excuse me, outside in. Work outside in. We work inside out if we were evaluating. We work outside in to differentiate. So we have cosine squared 3x, another way you could write this. And I think it helps uh, in terms of evaluating. I'm, also, I'm going to put this 3x in parentheses. Right? Um, but it's the whole thing squared, right? It's just a convention that we put the square next to the cosine, but it's not cosine that's squared. It's cosine 3x that's squared, right? So we're going to work our way outside in, right? So here we're going to have a, a u, which is blop squared. All right, and then we're going to work our way in a little bit. We're going to have a v, and that's going to be the cosine blop. All right, if it's not just a cosine x, it's a composite function. All right, and we're going to we need to use the chain rule. And then the w is going to be the last little blop, which is the 3x. And I really should have moved this down a little because now I have no space, there we go, to write the derivative. Because I probably should put the derivative right next to it. Okay, so now you can write it and give yourself enough space for the derivative. All right, so now let's find the derivative of the u part, right? The most outside part, right? So. The derivative of the outside part, we got blop squared is u. Derivative of blop squared is 2 blop. Right? We'll worry about the blop later on. All right, so now we're working our way in. All right, so now we have cosine blop. The derivative of cosine blop is going to be negative sine blop. And then last but not least, the last little part, the derivative of 3x. Well, that's probably the, that's definitely the easiest, I think. I don't know. They're all, well, they were, none of these were too, too difficult. But the derivative of 3x is 3. All right, so now to find the derivative of our whole function here, we're going to have to take the, the derivative of the u part times, and I'll put, with respect to x, times the derivative of the v part times the derivative of the w part. Oops, that's not dw dw, it's dw dx. Right? We just decided to call that little piece w so we could have a way to um, label them all. Right? But we need the derivative of the outside, which is du dx, the derivative of the a little bit more inside, which is dv dx, and then the very inside, which was dw dx. And all we got to do now is multiply them together, and we got to replace the blops with what, what was there. All right, so 2 blop, what's in the blop? That's what was in the blop, right? So this particular blop here is, I'll just put this blop equals uh, cosine 3x. All right, so let's fill in the du dx part with 2 times cosine 3x. All right, and so now we need the next derivative. All right, so we had negative sine blop. And then what was the blop? That was just the 3x. All right, so this blop here 
equals, so that's supposed to be an equal sign, the one above it there. Um, it's just looking a little funky. Um, oops, sorry, not sign. It's 3x. All right, so that blop there was, that was just 3x. We just used a blop so you wouldn't get confused. All right, so we're going to have 2 cosine 3x times negative sine, and that's a times, not a subtraction, times negative sine 3x. And then the last little part, times 3. All we got to do now is clean it up. We can multiply the things that can be multiplied, namely the 2, that negative there, and the 3. All right, so g prime of x is negative 6 cosine 3x times sine 3x. I don't, I don't really need that parentheses there. Let me get rid of that second parentheses. I'll just put the 3x in parentheses because I think that looks better. And there we go. That's all there is to it. Right? So if you label it and you get all your and you take you multiply all the derivatives, all the parts, the outside, the inside, and the innest side, you can't miss. Alright, let's do the same thing here. Very, very similar problem. Another way we can write this is h of x. Let me fix that. That looks that looks all weird h of x equals sine, and I always do this, 2x plus 1, and then I just put a parentheses around the whole thing and put squared, because right? that helps you set up the chain rule. All right, so the u, that's a blop squared, and just as a reminder, the blop here is everything inside those, all of those parentheses, which is the sine 2x plus 1, and we'll fill that in afterwards. Right? And then we have the v, right, which is what's inside that, that big old parentheses, which is the sine blop. And this particular blop was a 2x plus 1. And then the last little part is a 2x plus 1. Right? So a little hint on figuring out how many functions you have. If sine's raised to any power, sine's a function. The exponent's a function, and if there's anything but an x in that parentheses, that's a function too. All right, so now let's take the derivatives of all these things. All right, so du, that's just going to be to blop. And dv, that's just going to be derivative of sine is cosine blop. And then finally, dw, derivative of 2x plus 1, that's just a 2 because the derivative of 1 is 0. All right, so now for g prime of x, excuse me, h prime of x, we need to multiply the du dx times the dv dx times the dw dx. I just left, by the way, the dx is out of the top part because otherwise I ran out of space. I just abbreviated. All right, so then h prime of x is going to be um, 2 blop, and the blop is sine 2x plus 1. And actually, I don't even need those parentheses. I'm going to get rid of them. You need the parentheses around the 2x plus 1, but you don't really need the parentheses around the sine. 2x plus 1, just so it doesn't get to be too busy with parentheses, and then times the dv, so that's going to be cosine blop, and inside the blop was 2x plus 1, so cosine 2x plus 1, and then times the last little blop times 2. I'll put him in parentheses. He looks lonely over there. Actually, let's see if we can just squeeze in the 2 at the end there, and then we're going to multiply all the things that we could actually multiply by. Now, you can't multiply anything that you're taking the sine or the cosine of, but you can multiply coefficients. Come on, little cosine. There you go. Oop. There you go. There, now we squeezed them in. All right, so you can multiply these two things, the 2 and the 2. That's it. All right, so h prime of x is going to be 4 sine 2x plus 1. Uh-oh, can I squeeze it in? Cosine 2x plus 1, I guess that's going to... Oh, I'm so close to squeezing it in. Maybe if we move him over just a little bit. All 
I wrote too big on this problem. I gave myself no room for the other problem. There we go. Move him over. Move him over. Move your little 3x over. I should have, see, I should have left the parentheses out of this one. I got way too many parentheses here. And actually, I'm missing a parentheses. I got a parentheses that's not closed. All right, now we can squeeze everybody in because all we had left was cosine 2x plus 1. And there we go. All right? So if you just stay organized, you'll find that these aren't too difficult at all. All right, so these two are done. Let's do some more. All right, so now you know the big three rules of differentiation, product, quotient, and chain. Let's see how the three can be incorporated with each other. And we'll find the derivative of each of the following functions. All right, so here we have, first of all, we have product, right? We have 5x times the square root of x plus 3. But we also have a chain, right? Because it's not just an x inside this parentheses, uh, inside that radical. Let's first of all rewrite this one so that we have an exponent instead of a radical so that we can use the power rule. So we have 5x times x plus 3 to the 1 half. All right, so we're going to use the both the um, product rule and the chain rule. All right, so product rule, remember, all right, so you're going to take the derivative of the first one, or excuse me, take the first one, we'll call, well, I don't want to call them f of x because that's the whole function. Uh, we're going to run out of letters here. We'll just call it, we'll keep calling them u's. All right, so the 5x is going to be the u. All right, so we're going to have to take the du, dx, take the derivative of that, uh, oh, excuse me, oh my goodness gracious. And then to write, take u times the derivative of the second, dv dx, there we go. I spent so much time trying to figure out what letters to call things, because that's already called f of x, plus the second one, v, times the derivative of the first one. That's all I was trying to say. All right, and then for the, this part here, the dv part, that is also a composite function. All right, so for dv dx, we're going to have to take, we'll use more letters here, the outside, and we'll call them the w, and that's the outside, and then times the inside, and we'll work our way backwards. dx, <laughs> dt dx, that'll be the inside. I need more letters. All right, so and actually this problem's not going to be that difficult at all. All right, so the u here is 5x. The derivative of that, the du here, du dx, and I'll put du dx. That's just 5. The v is x plus 3 to the 1 half, and you can think of that as blop to the 1 half. All right, so the derivative, the dv dx, is going to be the derivative of blop to the 1 half, right? and then times the inside part. All right, so it's going to give us 1 half blop. Actually, I'm going to write it like this. I'm going to write it as the dw dx and the dt dx and the dw part. That's just the derivative of blop to the 1 half. And that's 1 half blop to the negative 1 half. And then the inside, the dt dx, oops, is just the derivative of x plus 3, which fortunately for us is really, really simple because that's just 1. Right, so the dt part, that's just, or excuse me, the t, we'll call them t. So the t is the inside, because I have no more letters, 
and that was just x plus 3. The derivative of that is just 1, so that's pretty easy. That's not much of a chain rule at all. But we, wanna, we don't want to neglect it because what if it was a 2x? Or what if I had something much more complicated than an x plus 3? We don't want to forget we'd have to take the derivative of that. In this case, though, it just happens to be 1. All right, so now let's write our final derivative over here. So we're going to have the first, which is 5x. All this writing, and actually the derivative is really easy, times the derivative of the second. And the derivative of the second, oh, we never finished it. The last little part there, the dv dx, was the 1 half blop. And blop, remember, was x plus 3 to the negative 1 half. We'll simplify that afterwards. And then times the derivative of the inside, but that was just 1. All right, so that's just going to be then times 1 half. And we may as well simplify that negative now. All right, so times 1 over 2 times the square root of x plus 3. All right, so first times the derivative of the second plus the second which was x plus 3 to the 1 half. And we could write that as a square root. Times the derivative of the first, which was just a 5. All right, now let's just clean it up and we're done. So f prime of x, final answer. Let's put the 5x in the numerator. 5x divided by 2 square roots of x plus 3 plus 5 square roots of x plus 3. And there's our derivative. So it's really not that complicated, but I want to make sure I broke down each little part, right, so that you knew how we got that derivative. All right, so we're done with this one. Let's go on to the next one. And this one's going to be composite as well. This time, we definitely have a chain. Here, here we had a pretty weak chain. It's kind of hard. I mean, it's a chain because it, x plus 3 is not x, but its derivative was 1. This one, we're going to have a true chain because its derivative is not going to be 1. All right, so here we have a chain and a quotient rule. And the quotient rule is inside the chain. All right, so let's start off with uh, the chain part. Right? So um, the u, right, the outside part, is going to be sine blop. The v is going to be the inside part, and that's the blop. And so that's 2. I'm going to give myself some space there. It won't take me that long to write the derivative for the u, but the v We've got 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 3. And that's a quotient rule, right? So remember the derivative, we're going to have the, and um, we often call the, the, the numerator, sometimes we call that f of x, and denominator g of x, all right? So um, we'll just say that the f of x, or maybe I should just use it. You know what? I'll just keep using letters. Forget function names. So there I got g of x as the name of it. So let's just call the numerator the w. Call them w, right? So w is 2x plus 1, right? That's our numerator. And then what haven't I used? t is our denominator. That's the x minus 3. All right, so on the chain rule, it's going to be the denominator, so t in this case. So our dv dx is going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, so dw, and then minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, so w dt, all divided by the denominator squared, t squared. I'm tired of writing f of x's and g of x's because they're always right there. 
right? And we want that to be our final. All right, so now all we got to do is figure out our derivative here. For the v part, the u is easy. The du, that's just cosine blob. Now let's figure out the v, all right, the dv. All right, so dv here is going to be the denominator, so x minus 3, times the derivative of the numerator, which we didn't bother to do. Let's do that right now. So dw, derivative of 2x plus 1, a big old 2. The only thing more complicated than that, or easier than that, is the derivative of the denominator, which is 1. All right, so we're going to have x minus 3 times the derivative of the numerator, which is 2, minus the numerator, 2x plus 1, times the derivative of the denominator. And I know it's just a 1, but if you write it in, then you won't have to think, hey, did I remember to put it in? You can see you did all divided by x minus 3 squared. So let's simplify that. dv is equal to, and so we got 2x minus 6, and then minus, don't forget to distribute, 2x minus 1, all divided by x minus 3 squared. All right, so we could simple, oops, well my square decided to, I don't know, x minus 3 squared. We need to simplify that. So the two x's are going to be gone. We've got negative 7 divided by x minus 3 squared. All right, so now that we've done all that work, now we get the easy part, the final derivative. All right, so g prime of x, right, we're going to just need the derivative of the outside, the du, times the derivative of the inside, the dv. So g prime of x is, all right, so du, that was just cosine. So cosine blop, and the blop was 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 3 time, uh, times the derivative of the, the, um, of the 2x plus 1 divided by x minus 3, the derivative of the inside part, and that was just negative 7 divide, uh, divided by x minus 3 squared. All right, now, you can't do much simplifying. Really, you can't do any simplifying at all. But we usually put the coefficients in front of cosine. So let's just move those coefficients, all right, and then we'll be done. All right, so I'm just going to kind of label this. Um, this all of this was just the chain and quotient rule. But our final answer is up on the top. And do I have enough? I'm going to just move this down just a little bit. Will it move? No. The problem will move. Hey, come back. Ah, oh, the hazards of technology. Ooh, come back. And I think I, have, I can squeeze it in here. I'll write it in red. So last little thing. G prime of x equals, let's just put that in front. Negative 7 divided by x minus 3 squared, and then fraction, you could put cosine up in the numerator, um, but because I can't write that small, we won't, we won't. And by the way, you could not simplify that at all. Whatever the cosine is, the cosine is. And there's our final answer. All right, final answer. All right, so, you know, you had a lot of steps here, but hopefully the steps weren't complicated. All right, and I like to show you all the steps. You know, if you label things, you're less likely to make mistakes. When you try to remember it all, uh, you might forget to write something down, and oops, there you have an error. All right, so here we have a chain rule and a quotient rule. All right, and the last one, the quotient was in the chain. In this case, the chain is in the quotient letters. All right, so uh, u is going to be, um, actually we've got the numerator and the denominator. In the last problem, I labeled a numerator, for lack of better letters, w and t. Just, I don't know why. All right, so uh, we got the quotient rule to deal with first. The numerator is 2x plus 5, and the denominator is x minus 3. 
right? And then we know for the quotient rule, just using the letters I chose for some strange reason, um, it's going to be the denominator, the t, times the, and I'll label that as derivative, it's going to be the denominator times the derivative of the numerator, so dw. I don't really need a parenthesis. And then minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator, the dt, all divided by that denominator squared. Right? We'll just label it with w's and t's just for no particular reason. All right, so we've got the quotient rule, and now we've got to figure out each of these derivatives. Well, this one's really, really, how many times have we seen x minus 3 in this particular set of problems? Derivative there is 1, so that one's really easy. Um, this one will be a chain rule, right? So we're going to have the uh, outside part is just going to be blop to the 1 half, right? The blop to the 1 half because we could rewrite that square root as an exponent of 1 half, blop, to the 1 half, right? And then the, um, we need the uh, v, which is going to be the derivative of the inside part, and the inside part is 2x plus 5, right? So derivative of blop to the 1 half is just going to be 1 half blop, to the negative one half. You gotta love that oval, by the way. There is two x plus five, and then the derivative of the denominator is just a big old whopping two, right? Because the derivative of five would be zero. All right. So now let's put that all together. All right. So we have t, the denominator, x minus three. Oh, we <laughs> actually let's put it all together as soon as we write the final derivative for dw. All the good people are waiting for you to come up, DW, there we go, it is going to be 1 half, and the blop was, come on, there we go, uh, was the 2x times the derivative of the inside, which was just 2. Let's simplify that. Well, the 1 half and the 2, whenever it decides to make its appearance, well, about time are going to cancel each other out. That's going to be 1. Let's simplify that negative exponent, 1, and then we can actually rewrite that as a radical. May as well, I guess. 2x plus 5. So 1 over the square root of 2x plus 5. Now that we've done that, now we can take the derivative. So h prime of x is equal to the uh, denominator, which is x minus 3, times the derivative of the numerator, which after we were done, was 1 over the square root of 2x plus 5 yeah, minus the uh, numerator, which was square root of 2x plus 5 times the derivative of the denominator, which was just a big old whopping 1, all over the denominator squared, which was x minus 3 squared. And we have complex fractions galore in this particular problem here. Um, we've got a fraction within a fraction. So actually we only have one of them. It's that, it's that 1 over 2x plus 5 that's the problem. So before we even do any more simplifying, let's multiply every term by t the square root of 2x plus 5, right? So technically, this is one term. I didn't simplify it yet, but that is one term. And then the 2x, square root of 2x plus 5 times 1 is a second term, right? And so that one as well is going to get multiplied by the square root of 2x plus 5. And then, well, you do it to the numerator, you got to do it to the denominator. Uh, square root of 2x plus 5, all right? And so now let's just finish this one off. We have h prime of x equals, all right, so uh, the 2x, square root of 2x plus 5 and the square root of 2x plus 5, that's going to cancel each other out. So now we only have an x minus 3. And now that minus 
square root of 2x minus 5 times the square root of 2x, excuse me, square root of 2x plus 5 times the square root of 2x plus 5. Well, that's just going to be the square root of 2x plus 5 squared, which is just 2x plus 5, right? That, that they're, uh, it's it's going to cancel out the radical because there's two, two, two x plus 5s. In the denominator, you have the square, the x minus 3 squared and the 2x square root of 2x plus 5 squared. I guess it looks better with this first. Two, square root of 2x plus 5, just put parentheses around it, because the other part is x minus 3 squared. Looks a little better. The last little thing we're going to do is just distribute the negative and combine the like terms. And I'm running out of space, so I'm going to distribute the negative right now. All right, so that's a plus, and the signs just change. <laughs> so we have x minus 2x. So h prime of x is going to be negative x. And you got a negative 3 and a negative 5. That's a negative 8. And in the denominator, we have the square root of 2x plus 5, x minus 3 squared. So quite honestly, that simplified out pretty nicely. It's not that, you know, not too bad looking. Certainly was better than what we started with. Right? And that's your final derivative, right? So a lot of this is just the setup. And then once you've got it set up, it's easy to find the derivative. Let's see if I'm going to do another problem. Or, or if I'm at a place where we should have a stopping point. This is a good stopping point because we're changing gears. All right, so I'm going to end this podcast, uh, and we'll continue with more with the chain rule in the next lesson. All right, bye for now.